The climate crisis is intensifying and the impacts can be life-changing for many communities. The thing that I completely underestimated was how this has actually affected my children. The challenge can feel overwhelming, but we have to rise to it so future generations can have a hopeful and a sustainable future. We must put climate change at the heart of all the decisions we make. There may not be a single silver bullet, but we do already have a range of powerful solutions that can get the job done. Flooding is among the most serious impacts of climate change. It has devastating and long-lasting impacts on people and their communities, as well as major impacts on our economy. In this short film, we want to highlight the steps you can take through the town and country planning process to enable sustainable and climate resilient development that will help us not just survive our changing climate, but to thrive in it. Flooding can come from a number of sources, from rivers spilling into their floodplains, high tides and storm surges inundating coasts and estuaries like this. Flooding can be caused by rainfall running off land, drainage systems being overwhelmed, or groundwater rising from below. Planning decisions have to account for all sources of flooding and how risks may change over the long term. Whilst flood defences like these reduce the chances of flooding, they can never remove all the risk. So even when areas are protected by flood defences, we still need to carefully consider the remaining risks. When floods hit, they can cause devastation, damage, disruption and despair. And sadly, sometimes they take lives. Over 5.2 million homes and businesses in England are at risk of flooding. The number that could be impacted indirectly is likely to be much larger. For every person directly affected during a large flood, about 16 more suffer knock-on effects like power cuts, toilets that won't flush, or impassable roads that stop people accessing the services they need. The devastating floods of 2007 caused around four billion pounds worth of economic damage. People were displaced from homes for nine months on average, with a quarter of homeowners uninsured or underinsured. These have been followed by major floods nearly every year since. In fact, the Met Office estimates that there's now a one in three chance of rainfall records being broken somewhere in England and Wales every winter. There are also many costs that are much harder to put a price on. Exposure to floods and storms increases the chances of poor mental health by around half. And these effects can still be seen two years after flooding. We've been flooded twice in nine months and you just, you just think that you, you, when, when you're in your own home, you, sh you should, that's the place you should feel the safest, shouldn't you? It didn't really affect me until a year or so later um, because I was exhausted by it all. Physically exhausted, mentally exhausted. You get distracted um, uh, emotionally and in a, a business sense. And it's very difficult to retain focus when you've got this elephant in the room, which is, getting your business up and running again because you've had a flood. The challenge we face to achieve a resilient nation is already a huge one and we aren't always helping ourselves. If existing development trends continue in line with projected population growth, we're likely to see a near doubling of properties on the floodplain within the next 50 years. And this doesn't account for the predicted effects of climate change. The Environment Agency provides expert flood risk advice to inform local planning authority decisions on planned development. We also help decision makers and developers by translating the latest climate science into user-friendly guidance, which sets out how climate change could affect the causes of flood risk in future. The latest climate projections for the UK confirm we can expect warmer, wetter winters and hotter, drier summers. This is likely to lead to more surface water and river flooding, but also to more heat waves and droughts. We could also see more than a metre of mean sea level rise this century, which would increase the risk of flooding on our coastlines, estuaries and tidal rivers, and speed rates of coastal erosion. The National Climate Change Risk Assessment puts flooding and coastal change among the top climate risks we face as a nation. Global temperatures are rising and without rapid concerted action, both to reduce greenhouse gas emissions and prepare for the impacts already locked in, 
there's a risk the climate emergency could spiral out of control. Our national flood and coastal erosion risk management strategy sets out a vision for a nation ready for and resilient to flooding and coastal change today, tomorrow and looking out to the end of the century. The investment that we have made in recent decades in flood and coastal risk management is making a difference in better protecting properties and infrastructure right across the country. But we know that in the face of a changing climate, we cannot expect to build our way out of the climate emergency. It's vital, therefore, that we look to a broad range of flood and coastal resilience actions into the future. That may be nature-based solutions that help to reduce the flow and store floodwaters. It may be sustainable drainage systems that help to tackle surface water flooding. Planners and developers have a vital role to play, particularly in terms of avoiding inappropriate development in high areas of flood risk and coastal change. Getting the right growth in the right places will be fundamental to creating climate resilient places. So we know we face a daunting challenge, but the question is, what can we do through spatial planning to help create safe and resilient communities? The first stage of tackling flood risk is to understand the current risks and how those risks will change over the long term. This is done through strategic and site-specific flood risk assessments to inform local plan preparation and decisions on individual planning applications. Once the risks have been understood, the most effective approach is to avoid them. The sequential test is the tool used to steer development to areas with the lowest flood risk. Doing so minimises the chances people, homes and businesses will be affected by flooding. It also minimises future need for costly and often carbon intensive flood defences which can contribute to the causes of climate change. If the sequential test shows there's no option other than to consider development in flood risk areas, it has to be shown that the development will be safe throughout its lifetime, usually a minimum of 100 years, without increasing flood risk elsewhere. In some cases, such as new homes in Flood Zone 3, an additional test, called the exception test, also has to be met. The test demands that development must provide wider benefits to the community, which outweigh the flood risks. It also requires development to reduce flood risk overall, wherever this is possible. In summary, in order to justify these types of development in flood risk areas, they really have to be of exceptional quality. So when development is absolutely necessary in flood risk areas, what can be done to reduce the impacts of flooding and help create healthy and beautiful places to live? Buildings should be laid out on a development site to avoid the areas of highest risk and to make space for water to flow and be stored. They should be designed so that the floor levels are above the estimated flood level and that the most vulnerable aspects of development are moved to upper floors. Construction materials that keep water out can help to minimise damage. But where that's not possible or safe to keep water out completely, resilient design and materials can help speed reoccupation and recovery after a flood. Development also has the potential to increase flood risk elsewhere. So how can we design places to ensure this doesn't happen? Developers need to mimic natural drainage. This is where water is gathered off surfaces like roads and roofs and collected in what we call sustainable drainage features. Some of them are here behind us in Sheffield. These are capturing the water, slowing it down, allowing it to soak into the ground. But they're also providing lots and lots of other benefits. You can see they're attractive features, they're providing biodiversity, they're allowing naturally irrigated vegetation and they're providing cool environments. And obviously integrated into development are a really positive contribution to those areas. Unfortunately, it's not sustainable to defend some of our existing places from the risks and impacts of flooding and coastal change, which are expected to increase due to climate change. Planning plays a crucial role in helping those communities confront these challenges and find solutions that enable them to transition away to more sustainable locations. Our local plan policies make it easier for residents and caravan parks like this to roll back as the coastal roads and sea levels rise. We knew there was both short and long term risks to building here, so we designed the building to be resilient and adaptable. It's raised off the ground so it can withstand the sort of flooding we anticipate over the next 20 years. Our planning permission also means that we have to review the risks every five years. 
When the risk becomes too great, the way the building has been constructed means it can be relatively easily relocated. We want everyone to enjoy Spain for many, many years to come. We know the scale of the threat. We know we need to act quickly to make the changes necessary for our survival. Our core messages are clear. Use flood risk assessments to understand the risks we face now and over the long term. Pick the right location for development, avoiding flood risk areas wherever you can. If development in flood risk areas is necessary, ensure it's designed to keep people safe, minimise damage and speed recovery. All of this helps build resilience in our communities. Working together, we have a real chance of a sustainable future. Time is really short and one thing is certain, failure is not an option.